today we will be talking about relationships. Not that kind of relationship, symbiotic relationships. So the first relationship we're going to talk about today is parasitism. Now parasitism is a relationship between two organisms where one organism benefits and the other is hurt. So one example we have of parasitism um, is a worm called brain worm that is going to drive moose crazy and then it will kill them. So this here shows the life cycle of the brain worm. And here's a picture of a moose showing signs of brain worm. Another parasite we know well are fleas. Um, fleas are parasites of many animals, including dogs and cats. They feed on the animal's blood, um, and they can actually kill the animal if they get bad enough. And as we learned when we were studying our protists, there are actually a lot of different protists that can infect humans um, that act as parasites. So things like the plasmodium that is transmitted by a mosquito bite to humans will cause malaria, and plasmodium is a parasite. So the next relationship we'll be looking at is commensalism. Now commensalism is a relationship between two organisms where one organism benefits and the other is neither helped nor hurt. So here, this shark here is the organism that is neither helped nor hurt, but these pilot fish, these little striped guys, they are going to benefit. Now, a uh, pile of fish is like a shark groupie. It's going to hover close to the shark and stray um, and look for stray bits of food. In the small crumbs, the shark doesn't lose anything, he doesn't gain anything, um, but they're how the pilot fish survive. So, the pilot fish um, benefits at no cost to the shark. Another example of commensalism you've probably seen before are barnacles that live on the skin of a whale. This does not hurt the whale at all, but the barnacles be benefit by getting a habitat and an area to latch onto. And a third example of commensalism are epiphytes. Now, these are uh, air plants, or another name for them is air plants, and they're going to cling high up to branches of a tree in order to gain anchorage without having to put down their own roots. This isn't going to hurt the trees that they latch onto, um, but it will give them a place to go without actually having to dig into the soil themselves. And finally, our last example of symbiosis is mutualism. Now, mutualism is a good relationship. It's a relationship between or two organisms, and both organisms are going to benefit. It's a partnership. So some examples of mutualism that you probably already know. Um, I'm sure you remember Finding Nemo. The sea anemone is going to protect the clownfish and provide food, but the clownfish will help keep the sea anemone clean. So this is a mutually benefit scenario, mutualism. So ants and aphids are another example. Uh, aphids eat a lot of plant juice, and it pretty much just passes through, through them, so the ants follow behind to eat it. Um, and to the ants, this is a great, nutritious meal, and the aphids are also going to get protection from the ants who are going to drive off any potential um, aphid predators. So parasitism, commensalism, and mutualism were our three types of symbiosis that we just talked about. Remember, symbiosis is just um, a relationship between two different species, um, and it doesn't mean a good thing or a bad thing. The different types of symbiosis, symbiosis can be beneficial um, or detrimental to different species. Symbiosis just means that the two organisms share an unusual relationship and they live together in some way.